I'm sorry, it's just as you see. I didn't mean for this to happen. Is this true? I asked my sister. Then what? This isn't the right time for that. Lily, you have to put really first. When I noticed I was raising my hand to both of them, I've never been so heartless. I never wanted to experience anything like this in my life. But because of my stupid husband and sister, I was left with a memory I will never forget. They will never be allowed to see the light of day. I had promised to pick up my niece, Lily, from preschool that day. My sister had forced me to do it again. Miss, please pick up Lily tomorrow too. Hey, why are you always so urgent? Your stay at home wife, you have plenty of time. That's not the point. I can hear my niece coughing on the other end of the line. Is Lily sick? No, she's fine. She was coughing just now. She's fine. Anyway, do me a favor. Just keep her for a while. For how long? A week? What? I'm going abroad. What do you think you're doing? I can't. Oh well, then I'm leaving Lily at the preschool. Well, if no one's coming to pick her up, she'll stay there. You're a real pain in the ass, you know that. I reluctantly agreed, thinking of my niece. Then I get a call from the preschool much earlier than I was supposed to pick her up. They said they had called me, who was their emergency contact, because they couldn't reach my sister no matter how many times they tried. The doctor told me that my niece, who had a slight fever that day, had lost consciousness and was rushed to the hospital by ambulance. Got the call and rushed to the hospital, but it was too late. I had been married for six years and I had no children. Started family planning and fertility control as soon as we got married, but we have had no luck. My sister had a baby two years ago, but she and her husband divorced soon after. Since then, she has been pushing me to take care of her child every chance she gets. She says it will be good practice for when I have a child in the future. I have mixed feelings about this, but my niece is cute. And I told my husband that I would take care of my niece again. I'm going to take care of my niece again tomorrow. Can I ask for your help? Tomorrow, actually, you know, I have to deal with an urgent problem at work. I have to fly there early tomorrow morning. It'll be a business trip. You okay with that? Well, I've known the client for a long time. It won't affect the contract. But I'm in charge of sales, so I'll have to fly out there myself. Okay, well, be careful. Are you gonna be okay on your own? If it's too hard, I'll go to my parents. I'll be fine. Thanks, have a safe trip. At that time, I thought I just had no luck because my niece is very attached to my husband. When I had taken care of her before, she was crying at night and I was having a hard time with it. My husband took her in his arms and calmed her down. So I was confident that my husband would be there if anything happened to her this time. But it's only natural to put work first. I was prepared for exhaustion. And the next day, I got a call from the preschool. I rushed to the hospital and found my niece's body was full of tubes. She was unconscious. The teachers at the preschool were also very upset. The director of the preschool was very critical to me. You're really his mother's sister, right? Yes, I am. I've been trying to reach your sister, but I can't reach her. We've called her her work too. They said she's on vacation. Where is your sister now? She's overseas. The director's eyes widened. So that's what happened. Director spoke quickly about today's conversation with my sister. My niece's face was flushed when she attended the preschool. When they checked the daily temperature check note, which needed to be done at home, they were blank. The preschool refused to accept the child with a blank sheet of paper. Then they took her temperature this morning. It was 37.8 degrees Celsius. The preschool cannot accept child with a fever over 37.5 degrees Celsius. The director told my sister to take the child home. My sister said that the child's temperature was usually high, so there's no problem. She overrode the teacher's attempt to stop her and left the preschool. After that, they tried to contact her several times, but when they couldn't reach her, they called our parents. Parents are working. They're not home during the day. In addition, the only emergency contact information listed was her parents. Teachers were stumped. 
they found an old emergency contact number that was submitted a year ago, and they had called me. This should never have happened. The director's voice was quiet and trembling because she's in the hospital. There were even a few tears in her eyes. We were looking at my niece. I am so sorry, I'll contact my sister. I apologized to the director and the chaperone and sent them back to the school. Try to contact my sister right away, but she was disconnected. Called her dozens of times, hundreds of times, but she never picked up the phone. Meanwhile, my parents, whom I called, rushed to the hospital. It's okay, Lily's gonna be okay. That's what my mother keeps telling herself. Don't worry, we're in a hospital. But the treatment didn't help, and her symptom only got worse. All the while, I kept calling my sister, but I couldn't get through. Two days later, the little life was lost without recovery. Child of only two years old, who died without the warmth of mother's touch. How could such a heartless thing be? I could not stop my tears as I touched her cold little body. Why didn't ask my sister where she was traveling? Why didn't I stop her from going? I couldn't help but blame myself. It's not your fault. My mother speaks softly to me as I break down in tears. But even she has tears streaming down her face. I tried repeatedly to contact my husband to let him know what had happened, but I couldn't reach him either. Time flies even when you're in the depths of despair. In the end, I held a funeral for my niece without any contact with my sister. This was the day she told me she was coming back from her trip. I was ready to pick up the call as soon as I heard from her. I unceremoniously brought my phone to the funeral, and while the monks were chanting sutra, my phone trembled. Oh, hello! Thank you for taking care of Lily. I just arrived at the airport. I'm on my way home now. What would you like for souvenir? You? What? What? I can't hear you! You, what are you doing? The chanting stopped at the sound of my voice. Huh? What are you mad about? You? You took a child's life. Huh? Lily, she died. Do you have any idea how lonely she was? Oh no, it's not funny. Right? It's not funny. None of us are laughing. I couldn't control my emotions. I exhaled several times to calm myself down. I'm in the middle of Lily's funeral, so get back here as soon as you can. I hung up the phone. I'm sorry. I apologize for stopping the chanting, but the monk gently placed his hand on my head. After the funeral, as I was getting ready to leave for the crematorium, my sister arrived out of breath. And behind her, for some reason, my husband was there. No way, right? My sister broke down crying at the sight of my niece. Why? My husband stood dumbfounded behind my sister. The relatives looked at her coldly, but no one blamed her. I think it was out of consideration for Lily. I didn't speak to her or to my husband until after the cremation. I think Lily was waiting for her mother. After the cremation, we went back to my parents' house. And my sister got a lot of blame from my parents. I listened in silence until my eyes fell on their carry on case. Why were they at the same location? What I saw was a sticker that the airline puts on the handle of the suitcases. They're both coming back from the same airport. My sister spun her mouth and didn't say anything. Then my husband opened his mouth. I'm sorry, it's just as you see. I didn't mean it to be like this. Is this true? I asked my sister. Then what? This isn't the right time for that. Lily, you have to put Lily first. When I realized I was raising my hand to both of them, I didn't let my anger erupt because of their infidelity. It was because I couldn't tolerate their behavior when it comes to my niece. Stop your tears. You have no right to shed tears. You got more than hundreds of calls from me. Why is it so hard to think that something could have happened to your own child at that point? 
While you two are enjoying your stupid adulterous trouble, Lily suffered and died. You'll be never forgiven for your sin. You should all just die a slow, agonizing death. I'm sorry. You think this is your penance to Lily? You think you're being honest right now, but you're just as guilty. You ignored my call too. You left my niece to die, and you're responsible for it too. Go to hell. My parents didn't stop me. Don't you dare to show your face again. You're not my daughter anymore. I cannot forgive you. Get out of here. Why? Why am I the only one to be blamed? I don't consider you my family anyway. My sister left without my niece's remains. We'll discuss our divorce at a later date. He nodded in silence. He must have been wracked with guilt. He gave me everything of our shared asset. And the alimony was paid in full. We divorced after that. You think this is atonement for your sins? You are full. You never get rid of your sins. And my sister and my husband will serve prison time. The director accused them of child abuse. My sister argued her case with a court appointed attorney, but no one was on her side. My parents and I were put in court, but we told only the truth. As a result, my sister received a five year sentence. My husband's case was quickly settled. He knew that my niece had been left in preschool with a slight fever, and he got two years in prison. Five years and two years? How can a person's life be compensated with only seven years? I feel so empty. These two will never be allowed to see the light of day. Six years have passed since then. I remarried and gave birth to my child. I will never forget my niece, but it's my child who has healed my wounds. I want to be a mother who is always there for my child. They say sin never goes away. So, they will carry it with them for the rest of their lives. They deserve it? No, it's still not enough. Human life is precious.